That's the message from the Biden administration today. The CDC just announced it's once again extending the mask requirement for all public transportation, this time for two more weeks. The mandate was set to expire early next week. Now it's in effect through May the 3rd. The CDC reports it's extending the mandate because of concerns about the Omicron subvariant, the one they're calling BA2. The data shows it now accounts for nearly 86% of all new COVID cases in the country. In a statement, the CDC officials wrote, in order to assess the potential impact the rise of cases has on severe disease, including hospitalizations and deaths, the healthcare system capacity, the CDC order will remain in place at this time. The mandate applies to commercial planes, public buses, trains, subways, and everywhere you get on and off all of them. The CDC has extended the requirement several times now, and that's led to a lot of backlash. Ten airline executives sent a letter to the president just last month calling on him to end the mandate. They wrote, it's no longer aligned with the realities of this pandemic. Delta's CEO, Ed Bastain, signed the letter. He spoke with CNBC's Phil LeBeau on Squawk Box this morning. I feel very strongly that the mask mandate should be lifted and let individuals, including our own employees, make their own decisions and take personal accountability for, for their health on board our planes. And candidly, uh, it's time to let the masks go. It's worth noting Ed Bastian, whose name I mispronounced, made those comments just hours before the CDC extended the mandate. The former FDA commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, is with us. For, uh, he's a board member of Pfizer and Illumina and a CNBC contributor. Doctor, good to see you. What do you think? Right decision on masks? Well, look, I'm not surprised that they extended it two weeks. There's a surge of B2 infection right now in the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. They wanted to see how that played out. I think we're further into that surge than we think. We're probably not picking up uh, most of the cases that are occurring, and we're probably going to see those cases decline as we head into the next two or three weeks. So I'm not surprised that they extended it. I think they can reasonably lift it. Now, the scuttlebutt in Washington is that when they do eventually lift this, and I think that they will when this May 1st deadline is up, they're going to impose a mask requirement for when you board and when you deplane. So there's still going to be a requirement that you wear masks at those two points, at the entry point and the exit point, which are the points of highest risk because you don't have the high-quality air filtration going when you get on the plane, when you get off the plane. I think that's going to be a more contentious debate because it's going to be hard to enforce that if, in fact, that's where they land. You, you, we've heard the airlines use the administration's own talking points about the pandemic as a reason why this should be lifted. We have the vaccine. We have treatments. Shouldn't that count for something in making a decision like this? Yeah, look, I think this could be reasonably lifted right now. Prevalence is low. Um, there's a surge going on, but it's, it's regionalized right now. People know how to protect themselves. A lot of people have had this infection. Many, most people have been vaccinated. And people who are at risk know that they can wear high-quality masks to protect themselves in those settings. And one-way masking is effective if you have a high-quality mask on, an N95 or a KN95 mask. So I think we are at the point where we can reasonably lift this. Again, I'm not surprised they extended it for a couple of weeks. I think the bigger question is what do they do on the back end of this? And if they do maintain some kind of requirement for wearing a mask when you get on and you get off the plane, um, that's going to be something that's difficult for the airlines to enforce. So I think it's going to be contentious. Doc, before we go, the Pfizer vaccine for kids under five, any way you could make maybe a little news on when they may be authorized? Yeah, I don't have insight into the process. This is really going to be up to the FDA. The data should be out this month, maybe later this month. We'll have some data out. Moderna, obviously, has also released their data from their vaccine. Um, FDA is ultimately going to have to be the judge here. I don't know what the agency's timeline is at this point. All right. Dr. Scott Gottlieb, great to see you. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.